Tonight, union members from across mid-Missouri met to make history and overturn the controversial right-to-work law. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Reed. And I'm Brittany Pieper. Even though Governor Greitens already signed right-to-work into law, there is still a chance Missouri voters could stop it. KOMU 8's Max Deaknight's here in the studio to tell us how. Brittany, Jim, even after the governor signs a bill into law, the people of Missouri can still overturn it. But that can only happen if a referendum makes it on the ballot. Now, in order for that to happen, opponents must collect signatures from 5% of voters in at least two-thirds of the state's counties. And while it's been more than three decades since a law has been overturned this way, opponents of right to work think they can pull it off this year. Typical hammer group. Greg Schrock is an electrician and a proud blue-collar worker. I'm the one that has to get up every morning and be on the job, game box open at 7 o'clock, tools in hand. We go out there and get the job done no matter what. Schrock opposes right to work and plans to help collect signatures to put it on the ballot. It's not pushed by people, it's pushed by the people that are putting all the money in these politics. And uh, therefore, the people they get into office are pushing right to work. On Wednesday night, Union workers from across the state met in Jeff City to get ready for what will be a summer filled with signature collecting. Doug Paint was one of them. He'll be going door to door. It actually breaks my heart because um, those large camp campaign contributions, uh, they're coming from one single donor, and he's uh, basically running the state right now. Greg lives here in Holt Summit, a rural community not unlike so many that you'll see across the state of Missouri. Now lawmakers in favor of right to work say that the law would bring jobs to communities just like these. We are not anti-union. I've had several family members that were union members. My grandfather, my brother, and my ex-husband. This is not an anti-union bill. This is a pro-jobs and will bring jobs to Missouri. But Schrock, the proud blue-collar electrician, says he isn't buying it. We will get this on the ballot before the people and let the people of Missouri decide if they want this silly law or if, the, or if they want to let the lawmakers have their way. Union leaders told me they expect they will need roughly 200,000 signatures in order to put right to work on the ballot in November of 2018. For now, in the studio, Max Deaknight, KMU 8 News. After six weeks of no reply from the Missouri Department of Revenue over tax refunds, State Auditor Nicole Galloway is using an unorthodox method to get the information she wants. KOMU 8's Ben Burke is live at the Capitol to explain. Tax day may be in the rearview mirror. However, controversy surrounding Missourians' tax refunds are still a focal point at the State Auditor's office. Earlier today, Galloway issued a subpoena to the Department of Revenue requiring the department turn over the information on how it handles people's tax refunds. Galloway wants to see whether the department is following state law, which says all refunds need to be sent to taxpayers within 45 days of filing, or else the state has to pay interest on those refunds. She says this is just an example of a larger problem in state government. When we see a uh, lack of transparency, uh, un, you know, being uncooperative, um, really a wall of secrecy that has fallen over state government, it is very concerning. Reached out to the Department of Revenue for comment but did not receive a response. The department has until next Friday to turn over the information. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Ben Burke, KMU 8 News. A bill that deals with a new substance called powdered alcohol moved forward in the state legislature today. KOMU 8's Adam Dexter is here to tell us what the bill means for Missourians. 31 states have banned powdered alcohol even though it hasn't yet entered stores. Now Missouri could create some, create some regulations of its own. Powdered alcohol is distributed by Pelcohol, which received permission to sell the product nationwide in 2015. Under Missouri law, Anyone could buy this powder in stores, regardless of age. The new bill would create a minimum purchasing age of 21. The goal of Missouri legislators sponsoring the bill is to protect minors. It concerned me that if this comes on the market as concentrated as it would be, because it basically just does not have the uh, liquid portion of it, that it would not be a good mix for teenagers. Two times before this, bills have been presented to ban powdered alcohol in Missouri. Both times, the bills have failed to make it beyond the Senate. 
Also at the Capitol, the Missouri House is moving ahead on a bill that tracks fetal tissue after abortions. The proposal passed by a vo voice vote today. It would prohibit donations of fetal tissue for scientific purposes, as well as setting stricter rules for record keeping by pathologists. The proposal needs one more vote before moving to the Senate. Here's what's happening right now. A federal judge has issued an injunction to block rules restricting, restricting abortions in Missouri. Judge Howard Sachs granted the induction, saying he was bound by the Supreme Court's ruling last year, striking down similar guidelines in Texas. The ruling will invalidate Missouri's requirements that doctors who perform abortions must have admitting privileges at nearby hospitals and clinics meet hospital-like standards. Planned Parenthood had been pushing for this move for a while, after suing over Missouri's restrictions this past November. A former judge says non-threatening inmates should not be taking up space at the Boone County Jail. We shared parts of his study last week. Today it was made public. KOMU8's Abby Breidenbach was at the presentation and she's here with the details. It is pretty sticky. That's because most of the solutions people have suggested for the overcrowding and overspending at the Boone County Jail just bring about more problems. Last year, the county spent $200,000 more than the $300,000 budget for the jail, which partially has to do with overcrowding. Former Judge Oxen Handler's work analyzes 21 points of study on solutions to this problem, like do we need a new jail? How big would it be? Some of the points, the jail should not house nonviolent offenders and house arrests should be considered more often. I spoke with a current circuit judge who said this study is a good beginning to the conversation about how to solve these issues. Solving the problems may require a magic wand, which we don't have right now, but all of us can work diligently towards fulfilling, if you're a judge, the constitutional obligations and the statutory obligations. What everybody can do to weigh in on the issue is voice their opinion at more meetings for the Judicial and Law Enforcement Task Force. The next meeting will be an open discussion about this issue on Tuesday. Reporting in the newsroom, Abby Breidenbach, KOMUA News. The Columbia Public School District is looking for its first chief equity officer. The candidate will replace Deputy Superintendent and Superintendent Dana Clippert, who's retiring. The new employee will take over the deputy superintendent's role and a reorganization of the superintendent's office will happen at this time. The position is an opportunity for CPS to advance its goals of creating equal access for all students, according to the district. The position is posted on the district's website and applications are being accepted now. Pretty warm out there today. Megan tells us a cool down is on the way, so let's check in with her for a look at the forecast. Temperatures are still warm heading into the evening hours, 70s for most of the area, but Jefferson City is still at 81 degrees. Winds are out of the south right now at 7 miles per hour here in Columbia, 16 up in Kirksville. Tomorrow we can expect more seasonable temperatures with some morning rain temperatures reaching 70 by the afternoon. After Thursday, though, we are looking at temperatures taking a roller coaster ride and another chance of rain. We'll have more on that after the break. Megan, thank you very much. A Mid-Missouri safety upgrade replacing equipment that dates back to the Cold War. And why Ellis Library is losing a tenant coming up. Welcome back to KOMU 8 News at 9. We're taking a look out over the Columbia Regional Airport throughout the day today. Mostly sunny skies with some passing fair weather clouds. The real story for today, though, was those warm temperatures soaring into the 80s. Very warm throughout the afternoon, and we did top out. Very near record highs are high for today, 86 degrees. That is two degrees shy of breaking a record for this time set in 1996. Temperatures are still warm heading into the evening hours. Throughout the United States, we can see that we have a warm air mass right here. Columbia is still at 73 degrees, but we have a stark contrast stretching down from Des Moines to Albuquerque. Colder air to follow, and that will be moving in as the cold front moves through heading into tomorrow morning. For Thursday, we can expect a more seasonable high at 70 degrees. Our average high for this time of year is 68. By Friday, we take a tumble to 55 degrees. Saturday, also at 50 both days, we do have a chance for some rain. Sunday into Monday, though, we do warm up to more seasonal high temperatures, and the sun will return. On satellite and radar right now, we can see that we do have some cloud cover starting to move into the area, preparing for that cold front to come through tomorrow morning. We do have that rain behind that, following along that cold front, 
starting to enter the northwest corner of Missouri right now. We can track out we can track our rain chance hour by hour on our precip cast. By tomorrow morning, that cold front at 4 a.m. is going to be stretching from Kirksville down just south of Kansas City, starting to bring rain into the mid-Missouri area. Later in the morning, that is going to stretch through mid-Missouri by 9 a.m. from St. Louis down Interstate 44 to Springfield. Jefferson City, you will be seeing rain for your morning commute. By the afternoon hours on our Thursday, we'll see mostly sunny skies, but cloud cover is going to return heading into Friday morning. Around 5 a.m., cloud cover south of I-70 with a chance for rain returning on Friday afternoon. Our greatest chance for rain is going to be later into the evening Friday and into the morning on Saturday. As we can see at 10 p.m. on Friday, rain through most of south of I-70 through mid-Missouri. By Saturday e morning, I should say, we will have a widespread chance for rain stretching all the way down the I-70 corridor down through the rest of the state. By Saturday evening, that rain chance is going to head out, leaving us with clearer skies. Tonight, expect a low temperature, very mild, of 63 degrees, increasing cloud cover, winds out of the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour, gusts strong up to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow, we will have a more seasonal day in store for us with a high temperature of 70 degrees. We will be seeing morning showers. Those winds are going to shift to the northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Over the next couple of days, Temperatures tumble starting Friday, 55 degrees, very cool with a chance for rain in the afternoon on Saturday, 50 degrees, also a chance for rain that day. On Sunday, we will see the sun return with a high temperature of 66. Looking into next week, temperatures are going to be back in the 70s. This Saturday would not be a good day to be out on a cardboard boat. No, it wouldn't, but there are going to be a lot of people <laughs> on float your boat anyways. So they might get a little cold. All right, Megan, thank you very much. <laughs> Speaking of the weather, tornadoes have ripped through mid-Missouri in the past, especially Randolph County. KOMU8's Daytona Everett tells us about a new grant that's helping small town up Highway 63. Before Monday, the city of Huntsville had a siren system that could barely be heard. The USDA gave it an economic initiative impact grant for a new system that can weather any storm. Say this, this siren is from the Cold War, so parts are not available anymore. Huntsville was in desperate need of a new siren system. It sounds like a hairdryer. So council member Connie Kissel applied for a grant. The USDA answered with more than $8,000. So it was a really good opportunity for them to upgrade their siren system that they had and bring solid service in the event of a storm siren or storm emergency to the city of Huntsville. The new siren system reaches five to six miles farther than the old one. Had the city not received the new working siren? Our community would be at risk. Gleason says she hopes to help other rural communities improve their storm systems as well. It saves lives. First of all, it really saves lives. The siren is up and running and has already begun, already been tested multiple times. For more information on how to sign up for tornado alerts and phone alerts, visit our website at KOMU.com. Reporting in the studio, Daytona Everett, KOMU 8 News. We'll be Green energy advocates held a news conference today ahead of EPA Director Scott Pruitt's visit to Missouri tomorrow. The speakers denounced Pruitt's stance on EPA deregulation. They also said increased investment should be put toward green energy, creating jobs and an economic boost. Associated Electric Cooperative is hosting Pruitt tomorrow and said in a statement, quote, Working together, we can make sure responsible and affordable energy remains the cornerstone of our rural cooperative a rural electric cooperative system. More energy news. Lots of noise at Bagnell Dam today. Ameren began phase one of its $52 million dam repair project. Crews started blasting water and scrubbing concrete to remove old weathered services. After the cleaning, Ameren will install new support anchors. The project should not be an issue for tourists, neighbors, or nearby businesses. We've, we've scheduled this construction to all occur during the weekdays. Uh, during the daytime because it is a pretty noisy evolution. Uh, obviously on weekends there's lots of tourism traffic down here. Uh, we've reduced the noise. We don't want to be making all the noise on the weekends. Ameren does not expect road closures or water levels to change. Ameren says the repairs will make the dam safe for decades to come. The last repairs were more than 30 years ago. 
The Center for Missouri Studies took its first step in moving from the Ellis Library basement to a new location today. KOMU 8's Haley Russell is here in the studio to explain where the center is moving and why. Today, the State Historical Society of Missouri held a groundbreaking ceremony signifying the start of its new building. The building will be moving to the corner of South 6th and Elm Streets. The new center will include a research library, art museum, and public meeting space. The ceremony centered around the importance of bringing the center to Columbia and allowing Missouri residents from all over to see and learn about Missouri history. To see this building now in Columbia uh, really write a whole different chapter of our history, at least make a different chapter of our history available to people uh, is an important thing. The expansion is being funded with $35 million coming from state construction bonds. Reporting in the studio, Haley Russell, KOMU 8 News. Missouri softball bats came to life yesterday, scoring 22 runs in two games. And today's game in Columbia was no different. Highlights coming up in sports. You never know what you're going to see at the ballpark, but I'm willing to bet you've never seen something quite like this before. Albert, the mascot for the Florida Gators, reached out to shield a young fan from a ball. You can see it hits the mascot right in the head. The young fan returns the favor, though, giving Albert CPR. Oh, that's pretty cute. Everyone was okay. Albert's going to live to chomp another day. Here's a look at what we're following for KOMU 8 News at 10. More and more Missouri cities are restricting tobacco sales to those under 21 instead of 18. Jefferson City just made the switch this week. Target 8 looks at whether these ordinances really work and keep tobacco away from teenagers. Megan. Pollen is high heading into tomorrow. Tree pollen high and mold as well. The good news is, though, grass and weed pollen will be low. Over the next couple of days, we will be taking a tumble temperature-wise. 70 degrees on Thursday. Rain chance Thursday through Saturday. Friday and Saturday, much cooler. Temperatures back in the 50s. Heading into next week, we can expect temperatures to start to rise again. Back up into the 70s. Another warm Wednesday next week at 80 degrees. I'm not so sure I've ever seen a mascot take one to the head like that. What a, what a scene. <laughs>